All right, so we just got out here and really all I'm doing is just graphing for the fish. First thing that I do when I go out walleye fishing is I'm on my graphs all day. I, I really don't stop until I know there's fish in the area. And right now I'm really just looking over kind of a sand flat. Um, it's getting close to fall time, so they're in that transition period. And I think they're really just using this right here. It kind of narrows down and goes back into a couple bays. I think they're just using this as a little bit of a highway. But right there, I mean, you can see, we're just kind of running this sand flat, kind of coming in through like a little mouth right here. And right there's one, two, three, four walleyes, another one right there. And running these sand flats with the structure stand, I mean, it's it makes it so easy. I mean, right there is probably one, two, three, four, five, there's 10 or 15 fish right there. And I mean, it, it makes it super easy on these sand flats to find them especially with the structure scan, looking out 80 feet to each side. There, there's no rocks out on these sand flats. I mean, there is a few you get over there a little bit, and it, I mean, right there's a couple rocks, and you can kind of tell them are rocks. I mean, it's pretty easy. You can see the big square shape. But get down to here, you can see them shadows in there, and, and that's really what you're looking for, is just them big black blobs, especially on sand flats. It makes it really easy. But uh, when you get into rock, that's when it gets a little bit more difficult. But on these sand flats, you can find them so easy and it just makes it a lot of fun. So now that I actually marked the fish, I'm just actually setting up downwind of them and I'm just gonna kind of cruise up through them. At, I usually like to go maybe 0 0.7, 0 0.8 miles per hour and just kind of cruise up back through them. And I still have my structure scan up here. We're just looking out to the sides. I'm still gonna pitch out to the front but I'm really just going along, waiting until I see them fish either right under the boat or on the structure scan, and I'm gonna anchor it up. I'm gonna start pitching to them. And it, I mean, it's usually, if you can see them on the structure scan out 40 feet or so, you pitch over there. If them fish are aggressive, they're gonna go. And I mean, it's, I actually had one yesterday that I watched on the structure scan, follow it right back into the boat. I missed them three times, and then I finally caught them. It was a decent sized walleye too. There's one. Oh, he's coming at me. <laughs> Let's see if I can grab him. Here's the first one. I mean, we turned right around on them fish. And I mean, I could see there was a big school of them there, maybe 15 fish right there. And uh, that one took it. And I'm expecting there to be a few more down there. So we'll get this one back and get back to it. There's a real big difference between a flat jig and a jig and wrap. So the main difference is, you can see right there, it's a much wider bait. It's got a lot wider tail also. So with this bait, when it's down there, you're actually gliding probably two to three times farther than a jigging wrap. And that's why I really like it. So when you're ripping that bait in 10 feet of water, it's probably going to each side, maybe four feet. It's just got that real long gliding action. And I mean, when you're running this bait, cadence has a lot to do with it. So many people just uh, don't work the bait enough. You can't really overwork this bait. And when I throw it out there, I let it hit bottom. Uh, most of the time, my go-to cadence is just giving it a big rip and letting it fall. Um, a lot of people say completely on a slack line, but I do like to keep a little bit of tension. I don't like to slow down the bait, but I do like to keep a little bit of tension on the line just so I can feel when the fish does hit it. Um, a lot of the times, it's usually about 50-50 when you're ripping it up and the fish are gonna hit it on the fall, you're gonna feel that tick. But for the most part, that's my go-to cadence. Now you can get a little bit more aggressive and I'm not saying just the uh, slower pops don't work because they do at times, especially when the bite's getting a little bit slower. But um, for the most part, I like to go with a, with a pretty steady rip. But the next one you can go to is just giving it a big double pop. And what that's doing down there, is it's coming up, it's starting to go back down and it's coming up again and it's just dropping it down. It's a little bit, it's a little bit different than just the, uh, regular old rip but 
it's something else that might be just the ticket. Um, just that little bit of change in cadence can really be the difference for the day. Fishing these sand flats, I mean, you're fishing just a big featureless part of the lake. And I mean, really I go through and I like to uh, power fish them really with the flat jig, jig and wrap. Uh, the biggest thing you got to rely on really is your electronics. You can't be afraid to move. You can't be afraid to search for them. Like I just marked a school of probably 10 or 15 of them and instantly they're moving, they're on the move and so am I. I'm just going around looking for them. And once I find them again, you might only get one or two fish out of that school, but you just got to keep going and keep searching and you're just going to, I mean, that's how you're going to catch your fish moving quick that's that's the thing if you find a school don't spend a lot of time on it um, i mean if you're still marking them that stay right with them we do have like a little bit of a rock break line right here so i am just kind of staying along that and just going up and down it and they do seem like they're following that rock break line a little more um, than just kind of going aimlessly out there but um there is some ways to pattern them on the sand flats but for the most part they're just roaming around aimlessly, a lot of times just looking for bait. Um, and in this area, I think they're just using it as a little bit of a highway also. So you just really got a lot of fish filtering through, but um, it's a fun way to catch them though. <laughs> First cast. <laughs> Literally just hit the bottom and that fish grabbed it. just moved to a new area and as soon as that fish, I mean as soon as the bait hit the bottom of the fish grabbed that flat jig, that's a better fish there. Alright, let's get her unhooked and get her back in the water. Oh yeah, I know. Try not to get hooked myself. There you go. Beautiful fish on the flat jig. Get her back in the water. There she goes. Look away for one. There he is. Came back for it. <laughs> Holy man, that's a strong fish there. Might need the net for that one. Ah, uh, nope. Not a bad fish. There you grab her. Here's another one. I literally just marked probably three or four fish right there on the structure scan. Pitched back over to him there about 40 feet over and uh, that one slapped her a couple times, missed it the first time, just she came back and grabbed it again. Yeah, I get her unhooked and get her back in the water. Maybe. There you go. Another nice fish there. Nice. Another thing with the flat jig that's really cool, and a lot of people kind of look past it, is the flat jig, the number six actually is an ounce and three sixteenths. So it's a heavy jig, and a lot of people don't think you can fish it, so, like, fish it shallow because it's such a big jig. But most of the time, I mean, right now we're in 12 feet of water. And a lot of the time I won't vertical jig it, but I'll cast it out. But I've mean, I've caught so many fish and five to ten feet of water with that heavy bait and it's an overlooked thing that a lot of people don't do but it's one of the probably one of my favorite bites to do i mean you can also fish these baits i've caught walleyes all the way down to 80 feet with these things with the shallow water bite is where your fish are really aggressive and it's just a fun bite to do yeah when i'm throwing a uh, flat jig jig and wrap anytime i really use the same rod especially with the heavier jigs I like to run a medium action. I, I won't go any lighter than that, medium fast action. And I like to use a lower gear ratio reel just because a lot of the time you hook them fish and you really gotta winch them up. For the most part, other than that, I'm using braid. I like a 15 pound braid and then I go to a fluorocarbon leader. I usually like to run three foot or more and I'll also keep that at a 15 pound and 
I tie direct to my flat jig. You know, a lot of people put snaps on so they can uh, change out their lures quicker, but I found that if you just tie it direct to that bait right there, you have, it gives it a little bit better action in my opinion, but that's just me. With the braid, you could feel so much, you, I mean, you could feel everything. As soon as you hit the bottom, you bring it up, you're gonna feel that tick when they're hitting it on the way down. And I'm just the kind of guy that likes to feel everything. I, I know some guys like to use the mono, um, and that's just another thing. It's personal preference, and I, I like the no stretch line. In my opinion, I think it's uh, I think it's just the right way to go about it. And another thing to that is with the no stretch line, I, I do like to set my drag to where when I'm ripping it, I am really I'm, I might hear just a tick in the drag going, just so when I set the hooks, you're not completely ripping it out of that fish's mouth. But for the most part, I, I do like the braid. I use a double uni knot. I, I know a lot of people like to use a snap swivel, but I do like to run a longer leader. That's why I don't go with the uh, uh, swivel on there, the little baby barrel swivel. That way I can just get it up through the guides and mainly just so I can run a longer leader, especially when you're in that clear water. It's just a confidence thing for me. I mean, this whole game is all about confidence. If you don't have confidence in what you're doing, you're just not gonna catch a lot of fish, in my opinion. I know it, it affects me a lot if I don't have confidence in something. For the most part, I do throw the number nines. I, I do like the bigger sizes. The flat jig, I do like to throw a number six. That's also the biggest size you can get. Um, I will go down to a number seven in the jig and wrap at times, uh, but for the most part, I do like throwing the bigger size of bait. And the biggest thing for the flat jig is the action. The action with the bigger size, it's just so much better. You get a much farther glide with the bigger sizes. And uh, same thing with the jig and wrap. I mean, you just get a little bit better glide. And that's in my opinion, but uh, overall, the bigger sizes for me all the way.